Do I need to be liked? Absolutely not. I like to be liked. I enjoy being liked. I have to be liked. When someone says, I don't like you, what they often mean is, you did not meet my expectation of how a person like you is supposed to show up in the world. I hope you like me. I'm not the first to think this and I'm not the last to say it. Life is a popularity contest. If you can manage to be tactful when you speak and personable, you'll in turn be likable. You'll probably go far in life. Talent can only get you so far. You ever wonder why Jeff at work is getting a promotion and you're not? Let me tell you a secret. It's not because he's better at your job than you are. It's because the boss likes him. <laughs> Likeability plays a huge role in everything in life, especially in the workplace. We can look at divisive celebrities like Kanye West, Jennifer Lopez, and even Amanda Seals, for example. They all have something in common. They all sort of say what's on their mind with no shame and do not really care about what people think. They don't care who they piss off and all of them have fans, but they also have a lot of haters as well, making them, to some people, unlikable. The thing they may all be lacking is a soft skill called tactfulness, or they just don't give a f <laughs> I really, 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 really wish everybody knew that I don't give a f Oh my God, I was thinking that. I do not. Oh my yeah. God, I was gonna say, we don't give a f One f two f red but tactfulness is the ability to get your point across in a respectful way considering others emotions for example if your hair is messed up at work i could say hey karen um your hair kind of looks like shit. you might want to go take care of that the client is not gonna like that or i can be tactful and say Hey Karen, um, so your hair's a little bit disheveled. You might want to have a quick look at it. You know, the client kind of wants to uphold a certain look. I'm still telling you that your hair's messed up. I'm just considering how I might want to hear that same feedback if it was directed towards me. So tactfulness is kind of like considerate criticism, if that makes any sense at all. It most certainly does not. But we all know if you piss off the wrong person at work, it can stop you from climbing up the corporate ladder or in Amanda Seals case, bar you from working with certain people within the industry and get you banned from events, prestigious gatherings, parties, even get you cut off from work in the industry. They call it blacklisting. You can't sit with us! Now, if you don't know who Amanda Seals is, let me put you on game. She is a very talented actress most recently notable from the show Insecure. Among the many other things she's done, she's been in the industry since she was like a child. In my opinion, her acting ability is great. She is in fact an eloquent speaker. She's very educated and she's passionate about political topics and her community. But her social media presence, the divisive topics that she talks about, and her overall abrasive attitude is the reason why people don't like her. It kind of rubs in the wrong way, even if she is saying factual things that need to be said. People are sensitive. And actually her recent social media drama is the inspiration for this video. So I wanna roll a little clip and put you guys up on game about what's going on with her. You know, whether you like me or not, I've dedicated my entire life to the advancement and the love of black people. And I have spent this week and my entire life, um, you know, being excoriated for maybe not always having the best uh, delivery or not being able to uh, maybe put my, my emotions into the space in the best way possible. This week in particular, I watched as members of the Black community and Black media happily have castigated me publicly for simply saying that I feel I deserve to be in spaces that I've poured into. And the thing is, I really do enjoy Amanda Seals as an actress. It's just her story outside of being an actress or her social media presence, kind of her personality, reminds me so much of how I grew up being, just being very direct and very blunt. Now we gotta be honest, we like desperately need people that act like Amanda Seals. We need people who tell tell the truth. <laughs> like we need fearless leaders. 
and everyone is free to voice their opinion you know this is a free country but it's one thing to voice your opinion and not really care about the consequences the thing is that she does care about the consequences and she's on the internet sharing how she feels i don't want to say regretful because i don't think she regrets anything that she says but i think she comes on the internet and she feels shunned and she doesn't understand why and i'm pretty sure it's because she makes people feel uncomfortable <gasps> But if you make people feel uncomfy, like why would anybody want you there? You might ruin the party in some people's opinion. It's almost if she doesn't understand that you can still get the point that is valid that you have in your mind across without having to come off as abrasive, just be tactful about the way that you speak. Like she can still get her point across without having to ruffle people's feathers by being tactful if she really wants to keep her position in such a fickle, fickle, fickle place like Hollywood. I truthfully think she would make a great politician though because she has strong stances on political things and she's very educated. She's a wonderful, eloquent speaker, just very knowledgeable and she doesn't back down. That's what everybody really truthfully wants in a politician and somebody who tells the truth. And I just want to do a quick side note. I recently found out that Amanda Seals is indeed autistic and that doesn't take away from her ability to comprehend and her intelligence. I'm just throwing that in there because a lot of autistic people have issue with with picking up on social cues and reading the room and maybe she doesn't feel when she's making someone uncomfortable. I don't know, I just thought that was important to add because I am kind of using her as a pivot point to talk about the topic of likability, so. And truthfully, every single industry and situation has its own likability politics. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I know y'all heard that saying, life is a game. Well, being likable is like one of those unspoken rules of this game of life. Unless you want to be on free play mode in life, like GTA, where you're like running around and blowing up shit and stealing cars. Oh, oh. oh It's your prerogative do you when you go around saying whatever and don't consider anybody's feelings there are consequences like bridges being burnt now i'm no stranger to burning bridges in fact i used to burn a lot of bridges in my previous life working events full time that is why the topic of likability and tactfulness is so near and dear to my heart <laughs> so when i was in the events industry it was a lot of like kissing butt sucking up to the people in charge. And it was a lot of just like putting on face for the show, a lot of fakeness, a lot of backstabbing, a lot of cattiness. If you know anything about the events industry or you're in it and do anything, anything in shows, events, anything like that, you already know exactly what I'm talking about. Now me personally, I've always been kind of a blunt person when I talk and I kind of tell it like it is. I've always been like that. So at work, working these events, when I felt like I was disrespected, not being not getting breaks or something or being told information that i just knew flat out was false i would defend myself in such an abrasive and non-tactful way <laughs> and looking back on it now i can cringe because i just came off like such a bitch. <laughs> Well, my sister and my cousin took me out to eat one day and they were like, you know, you just don't have this thing called tactfulness. And I'm just like, what is that? I don't even know what that is. They're like, just the way you say things sometimes, even if it's a true fact or whatever, you're saying it the wrong way. You could say it in a nicer way and not come off so mean. And it was rich coming from them because let me tell you, if you're watching this sister, I love you. But I burned a lot of bridges being not tactful, but I learned that I can keep it real and still be conscious and aware of the way my words could affect people and how these people might interpret these words. But learning about likability and learning to be tactful and just honestly more considerate because that's what I needed. <laughs> it's allowed me to build relationships, working relationships, maintain working relationships, even if I may have like an abrasive, annoying, or even micromanaging client. In short, it really just allowed me to keep making my money and not let any of this BS get in my way. Make the money. Don't 
don't let it make you. And not to burn a bridge where I could end up building the bridge and maybe adding some lights to that if you're picking up what I'm putting down. So the bottom line is when you're more tactful, you're usually more likable. And clearly there's benefits to being likable in this life. There's even studies to prove it. A study mentioned in the National Library of Medicine's website summarizes that in jury trials, more likable the lawyer is, the more likely they're going to win the case. And we all know that in a jury trial, when the lawyer presents their case the most believable, the jury will probably vote in their favor. And that means they win the case, baby. That means they win the money. And it's like another benefit to being tactful is probably avoiding a lot of chaotic events that could happen in your life. You know, if you come off abrasive and you come off harsh, you could possibly start fights that didn't even need to happen because people misinterpreted what you were saying, etc., etc. You can dissolve so many situations of possible chaos by just taking a second, pausing, and coming up with a tactful response to some bull <laughs> That's some bull <laughs> On the flip side, you of course don't want to erase everything about yourself just to appease others and be more likable. I love what Alicia Mendez says in her book, The Likeability Trap. She talks about the thin line between appeasing people to be more likable and losing yourself in the shuffle of the workplace. She encourages people to be authentic to themselves while making others feel comfortable, which I believe is the best way to do it because who wants to go around being someone fake and having to wear a mask the whole time when they're at work? I'm sure that can be exhausting. It's like working two different jobs and getting the same pay. <sighs> You're right. And she says to be genuine and not strive solely to be likable. Just be conscious of what you say. And at the end of the day, likability is subjective and shaped by various factors, including our identity markers and interactions with others, among many other things. And honestly, I'm not going to act like you don't sometimes have to be abrasive in the workplace, especially if you're a woman in a male-dominated industry. You have got to be a little bit stronger, so they take you more seriously, and it's crazy that it has to be that way but even still today it still has to be that way it's all politics and such a strategic game to wrap it up like of course not everybody's going to like you but i wouldn't say i would try to make their dislike of you easier i don't give a f do i look like i give a f because i don't i just wish somebody would have told me that likability and tactfulness was so important especially when it comes to the work environment make sure to go outside and get some fresh air don't be on this internet all day let me know what you think in the comments and i'll see you guys later with another video